Hi, I'm Hayley from Heart Called Ministries and I want to share with you an amazing message. We already talked about how we have our wings clipped for a season for a reason. And this is kind of like a bit of a part two because if you are one of those people who are in a season of having your wings clipped and you're fighting against it, fighting with all of your might, trying to deliver yourself, running here, running there, trying to find solutions to your circumstance, if you have not surrendered to the Father, to the falconer who can, who can heal your wounds, who can change your circumstances in the blink of an eye, then you're still going to be in your circumstance. You're still going to be in your suffering. If you've not learned how to glory in tribulation, then you might just have to stay there for a bit longer, just like the children of Israel going round and round and round in circles. But, you know, if you don't... Submit to this process of purification. Submit to this process of pressure. Develop perseverance. Develop character. You don't get hope. And today I want to speak about the value of hope in our lives. Okay? So first of all, I'm going to share your story. There's a man called Dr. Viktor Frankl. He was a psychologist. And during the Second World War, he was taken as a Nazi prisoner of war and they did terrible, terrible experiments on his body. And he, he kept a record of his observations during this time of, of being uh, kept as a prisoner of war and uh, one of his observations that he had was that they could touch his body but they couldn't touch his spirit. And that indeed he was more free than his captors because he had learnt how to glory in tribulation. He had learnt how to keep himself in God's hand. And he went on to share how he had observed of the men that he was locked up with that those that had hope, it may have been the hope of reconciliation with a family member, it may have been the hope of finishing a work that they hadn't finished yet. Those that had hope endured and survived. And those who didn't either ended their life themselves through suicide or died by succumbing to disease or were taken even. And I just see that this is such a, a, a very clear picture of how hope works in our life. It is our keeping force if you turn in your Bibles to Lamentations, chapter 3 and verse 21, we see that this, this whole section is entitled, The Prophet's Anguish and Hope. And it's, he's just been going through and he's saying, I'm a man who has seen affliction by the rod of his wrath. He has led me and made me walk in darkness and not in light. Surely he has turned his hand against me time and again throughout the day. And he goes on and on and on about how God had placed him in this hard place, this, this place of testing and trial and tribulation. And then in verse 21, you see a turn, a change in the prophet. And he says, This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. Through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul, therefore I hope in him. Isn't that just a, a very enlightened scripture? The prophet, circumstances are tragic. Tragic, pressure difficulty, struggle, striving, pain, suffering. And there's a real key here because the prophet says, this I recall to my mind. He took action here. And the action that he took was to bring to memory God's faithfulness. God is faithful. He does not change. His compassions, his mercies, 
His compassions, they fail not. They're new every morning of every day. Now, I want to speak to you in your circumstance. You might be thinking to yourself, woe is me. I'm suffering. It's hard. Woe is me. It's hard. I'm suffering. And you might want to rescue yourself. And you might want to put your hope in Uncle Danny coming forward with some money or Auntie Sue or Nana or Grandpa or Mum or Dad or the government or I don't care who it is, the banks. You might want to put your faith and your hope in somebody delivering you from your circumstance. But I'm telling you now, there's only one person who can deliver you from your circumstances and that is Jesus Christ. That is Father God. And it's when you learn how to glory in tribulation, how to change the attitude of your heart, how to turn your eyes upon him who cares for you, turn your eyes upon him who is faithful, whose compassions fail not, whose compassions are new every single morning when you learn how to turn your eyes on him everything changes because your hope is in him and it goes on to say here it says great is your faithfulness the lord is my portion says my soul and portion here it's talking about inheritance the lord is my portion my inheritance therefore I hope in Him. And I want to challenge you today. What are you hoping in? Are you hoping that the economy is going to pick up? Are you hoping that you're going to get a great education? Are you hoping that your talents and skills and ability are going to make a way for you? What are you hoping in? Because if you're hoping in anything other than God, you're going to be disappointed. Psalmist David, turn to Psalm 119, verse 147, says, 119, verse 147 says, I rise before the dawning of the morning and cry for help. I hope in your word. Are you rising before the dawn every morning? Are you crying for help? Are you hoping in God's word? There's, that's a three-part formula right there. Get up early. Cry out to God for help. And then hope in his word. Get his word and place it in your heart. Bring to mind, like the prophet says, I bring to mind. Therefore, I have hope. Get up early. Get in the word. Pray. Call upon a God faithful God who can do it, who has done it, who will do it, who's the same yesterday, today and forever. Call upon him. Ask him for what you need. If you go to him first, you're going to find wisdom. If you go to him first, you're going to find amazing, miraculous doors open up that will will be doors that no man can close. If you go to him first, go to him first for what you need. And you will find that you have a portion in the Lord, that you have an inheritance in Him. Jeremiah says, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, to give you a hope and a future. Do you know the plans that God has for you? Do you know the plans to prosper you, to give you a hope and a future? Because if you don't know those plans, if you don't know what it is God wants your life to do or who he wants you to be in your life, then how are you going to have a hope in a future? God, beautiful loving Father, is waiting for you to take the first step. He's waiting for you to say, I need you, Father God. Proverbs 13, 12 speaks about hope. It says that hope deferred makes the heart sick. And we covered that in the last, um, in the wings clip for a season. I talked about how when my hope was deferred, that my heart became sick and I suffered with depression. But the other half of that scripture is really wild. So I'd like you to turn to Proverbs 13 and verse 12. 
And let's read what it says. It says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. But look at the other side of the coin. It says, but when the desire comes, it is a tree of life. When the desire comes, it is a tree of life. Okay, all right, let's get serious here. What are you hoping for? What are you asking Father God for? What is it that you're desiring? Because if you're asking him and he gives you your desires, then it says here, it's going to be a tree of life. And a tree of life sustains. What is it that you're desiring? What are you asking for? Because when that desire comes, it's going to be a tree of life. It's going to be a tree of life for you. Hope does not disappoint. When we have perseverance and character and we learn to glory in tribulation. What are you hoping for? Who is your hope in? If you turn to the book of Romans 8, 24 to 25, it says this, For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. <laughs> there we go, perseverance again. No matter which way you look at it, left, right, up or down, you're going to have to do something. You're going to have to get up and pray. You're going to have to get in the Word and remind yourself. You're going to have to bring to mind the good things. You're going to have to place your hope on something. Isn't it best to place it in God? Because he's the one that can deliver you from everything that might be going wrong in your life. But if you try to deliver yourself, you'll find you'll go around the mountain and you'll be back in the same position. Different circumstances, but the same position. But when you submit yourself unto God, he will bring you through. He will mature you. He will refine you. He will bring you out the other side and you will be changed. And you will know freedom from whatever that was, that circumstance that was binding you, that was causing your suffering. Father, I thank you for every person that watches this video, God. I thank you that you are the one that is their hope, God. They're not hoping in Haley Solich from Heart Called Ministries. They're hoping in you, Jesus. They're hoping, Father God, that you will touch their lives. I pray for each that they would not leave their season until they find the reason for the season, God, that they'd not go around the mountain again, but they would be able to step forward into the promised land, Lord. Let them know their portion is in you, that that's their hope that their portion is in you, Father, that as they submit their hearts to you and give to you every circumstance and they bring it in prayer, that you are going to start to open doors that no man can close, Lord. You're going to start to change the circumstances, Lord. Let them not try to get out of their season, Lord, before it's time. Let this maturing work that has to happen be brought to completion. I pray completion in the name of Jesus. Completion upon every person that sees this video. Let them not leave their season without being completely uh, taken through, Father, into that purified process that you have for them. Let them gain the strength. Let them gain the character. Let them know what it is to persevere, to press in, to push forward, to continue to go, to strive towards the goal that you have for them, Father. And Lord, I just pray right now that they would know what love feels like, what the compassion of God feels like, that you would wrap your loving arms around each one right now, Holy Spirit. Touch in the name of Jesus. Touch in the name of Jesus.